All right, today we're going to do a problem over uh, gas and, and pressure. So uh, if you don't uh, or aren't familiar with gas and pressure, um, this video is specifically going to be designed on how to do problems using dimensional analysis for gas and pressure. I would highly recommend that you visit the chemistry playlist at khanacademy.org um, and uh, view uh, Sal's um, video on Bohr's Law and get some intuition on it ahead of time. That way maybe some of this will make a little bit more sense. This video is going to be solely uh, or mostly dedicated towards um, understanding the dimensional analysis for solving those problems and giving examples. So let's get to it. The gauge on a 12 liter tank of uh, compressed oxygen reads 3,800 uh, yeah, 3, millimeters of mercury. How many liters would this same gas occupy at a pressure of 0.75 atmospheric units at constant temperature. So basically what uh, what this is getting down to um, is our formula uh, for pressure and volume and it says temperature is constant so we don't even need to equal that in there. Um, so what we have is P1 because mm -hmm. it gives us a pressure 1, P1, uh, and then a volume uh, a starting volume which is 12 liters. If you remember uh, pressure is measured in either ATMs or millimeters of mercury or there's other units as well. Uh, volume is in liters or milliliters or kiloliters. Um, mass is in grams, things like that. So we know that's a volume because it's in liters. So it gives us a P1 and a V1 and we know that P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2, right? And it even gives us the P2. It says it's in ATMs. V2. So let's uh, add our equalities in here with this formula. Pressure 1 was 3,800 millimeters of Hg times volume 1, which was 12 liters, we know that to be equal to pressure 2, which in this case is 0 0.75 atm times our volume 2. And it's wanting to know what the volume 2 is, right? And as you write out this formula, you can already tell, um, you know, maybe how you're going to solve for it, but there's a problem with it. The problem is our units on the left are different than our units on the right when it comes to pressure. We have ATM here and millimeters of mercury over there. Um, so you can convert this to millimeters of mercury or you can convert this to uh, ATMs, right? How I let this dictate which one I convert and which one I don't, unless it's just really easier to do it the opposite way, I always just look at what it's asking me uh, in my problem. And so it, it's asking me for volume in my problem um, not for a specific temperature. So I'm just going to take and uh, do millimeters of mercury um, and, and convert that over to ATMs because it seems like it would be just a little bit easier to do it that way. So you would not you would get the same answer if you took this to millimeters of mercury uh, just as if I'm taking this to ATMs. All I'm doing is just getting my units on the same side, uh, on both sides of the equation identical. So we have 3,000 uh, 800 millimeters of mercury and we need to multiply this by some type of conversion factor to where I know for every you know one ATM I have how many uh, millimeters of mercury and the conversion factor and a lot of teachers will give this to you some may not um, but basically uh, you have 760 millimeters of mercury for every one ATM. So for every one atmospheric pressure unit, um, you have 760 millimeters of mercury. So all I'm going to do at this point is write 760 millimeters of mercury because mercury is on the bottom and on the top I want it to cancel out. For every one ATM. That's going to equal 
blank ATMs because this is going to cancel out. That's going to cancel out. I'm going to be left with ATMs. So let's plug that in here real quick. And move this out of the way. A little bit here. Sorry, I'm having mouse problems. All right. So it's 3,800 uh, millimeters of mercury times 1 divided by 760, and that equals 5. So we have 5 ATM. All right. So we can replace this. I'll just put it in parentheses up here. 5 ATM. So 3,800 millimeters of mercury really equals 5 ATM. All right. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and solve for our problem. And we can even rewrite the equation so that it's easier for us to solve. So we go down here, um, and we have 5 ATMs times... 12 liters equals 0 0.75 ATMs times volume 2. Well, we want to solve for volume 2, so we're just going to do um, some algebra here, and I'm going to divide both sides because I'm multiplying on this side of the equation. I'm going to divide both sides by 0.75 ATM so that way my 0.75 ATM will cancel out on the right bring it over here 0 0.75 ATM and that's going to equal my V2 so let's just plug that in here uh, grab my calculator 5 times 12 equals divided by 0.75 that equals 80 so V2 equals 80 now 80 what right well my ATMs cancel out there I'm left with liters so it's going to equal liters. That's why it's really important in chemistry to label everything. I can't actually think of an instance where you can over-label something. Um, so always label everything. Now you could have uh, done this a few different ways. Basically what I did write, write down here though is I took this formula P1 V1 equals P2 V2. I wanted to solve for V2 so I divided P2 by both sides. New formula is P1 V1 over P2 equals V2. Instead of trying to remember, you know, four different formulas for everything that you're wanting to solve, just remember this concept of, of cross multiplying and dimensional analysis because then you just have to remember one formula. And really, if you watch Sal's video, you don't even necessarily have to remember a formula. You just have to specifically remember um, kind of how uh, everything relates to, to one another. So um, I hope that helps. I actually don't think you can see um, that formula because I think my screen's um, cutting it off. So I'm going to scroll down here and rewrite what I just wrote over there. Um, that was P1 V1 equals P2 V2. I want to solve for V2. So I'm going to divide both sides by P2. My P2 is going to cancel out. And I'm going to be left with P1, V1 over P2. It's going to equal V2. So just in case, I think that cuts off right there on the side. Um, but just in case, uh, that's what it says. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps.